Depression remains a major problem in our society, but now there's a new outpatient treatment for it called TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. So what is TMS and how does it compare with other ways of addressing depression? This is UAMS Health Talk, a podcast sponsored by University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences. Thanks for listening. I'm Joey Waller. Our guest, Dr. Luann Eads, an interventional psychiatrist at UAMS. Dr. Eads, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. So let's get right into this. TMS, I guess, stimulates certain areas of the brain that are underactive during depression. Am I right? Correct. And so how does that work exactly for the uninitiated? We know that certain areas of the brain are not performing as well as normal. And in order to help bring them back up to a normal level of performance or functioning, then we use electromagnetic radiation, which is generated through TMS, to stimulate a targeted area and over a period of several weeks, the brain modifies itself and hopefully gets back to a normal level of functioning. And why is it that those areas of the brain and people depressed function that way? Do we know? I'm not sure we absolutely know why a certain area is not functioning up in a more normal range, but we have been able to identify specific areas that are underperforming, and that is where we target our treatment. Gotcha. So what exactly does a typical TMS procedure involve for the patient? It's five days a week of treatment for six weeks. The patient comes in the first day we do what's called mapping or identifying the best location to place our magnet and subsequent days we use the coordinates to set the magnet on those same areas. They're in the chair for about 20 minutes. During this period of time there is a short burst of pulses of stimulation to the skull that passes into the brain and is translated into electrical activity in the brain, and that's how the nerve cells talk to each other. Then there's a brief pause, followed by another series of stimulations, and this goes on for a 20-minute time period. And so you mentioned you're actually able to pinpoint what areas need to be addressed specifically, right? That sounds pretty cool. We pinpoint a general area that we target with stimulation. We pinpoint what's called the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, and that has been known for a long time. That's an area that is not functioning up to par in depression. You mentioned also, doctor, that you're sitting in a chair. So in terms of the atmosphere overall of what someone can expect, are they in a room that's dark, light, can you read or be on your phone, or do you need to just relax and put everything out of your mind? What's the setting besides sitting there and having this done? They're sitting in a chair, and there's a helmet that contains the magnet itself that is placed up on the head. The room can be adjusted to patient preference. Most patients prefer a dim lit room that is calming and relaxing and soothing during the treatment area. We do recommend that you try to have positive thoughts during the treatment time and those kind of things, but it's more of a relaxing atmosphere. Gotcha. How about how long is a given session? It takes probably about three to five minutes to set up everything. Once it's set up, then it's a 20-minute procedure. And then after the procedure is over with, then it takes another three to five minutes to undo what's been set up. And is there a typical length of time that someone would need to continue this procedure? A series of treatments usually consist of 30 treatments followed by six tapering, so a total of 36 treatments. Again, the series is usually five days a week for six weeks, and then followed by a tapering, which is usually one week of three times a week, one week of two times a week, and one week one time for a total of 36. And so would you agree it sounds from the commitment involved as though this is pretty intensive in terms of the commitment 
on a consistency basis, but then over a relatively short amount of time if hopefully it works, right? Well, you're looking at about a six-week commitment, but it takes about a six weeks to really say that you're getting a response from a medication or not getting a response from a medication. The positives of TMS is that there's no medications. We don't change medications, so you continue on with the same medications that you're on. We're not adding or subtracting medications, so TMS, there's no medication side effects to have to manage, and a lot of people that come to TMS have had a number of medication side effects or not responded. Unlike ECT, you can drive yourself to and from the procedure, and you're not going under anesthesia like you would for ECT. There's not a memory concern with TMS, whereas there's a rare memory risk with ECT. Okay, so a couple of other things. You mentioned the comparison there between TMS and medication, no side effects with TMS, et cetera. How about in terms of comparing their impact? Does this work better at times than medication does? Does it work the same just without the side effects? How would you compare the benefit? It is statistically, per literature, it's as good, if not a little bit better. Efficacy as far as response It's not 100%, but neither is medications or any other procedure we have to offer. So for the average depressed person, I know this encompasses a wide range of different types of people in terms of what they suffer with depression. You certainly can't paint them all with the same brush, to say the very least. I know that. But from your experience with depressed people taking TMS sessions, what would you say is the main benefit that they would feel getting out of it? What would they notice? Well, TMS, just like any interventional procedure, is targeted towards what we call treatment-resistant depression, meaning depression that has not responded to medications and or therapy. It is FDA approved for failure of at least one antidepressant. Most insurances would like to see failure of at least two medications. And we know that each subsequent medication that a person is given, the less likelihood they are to have a response. TMS is FDA approved for mild to moderate depression. And it can be very helpful for people that have not responded to medications and can help decrease their depression and or move their depression to more of a remission state. So you just mentioned it's for those that have had medication attempts fail. How about someone that hasn't tried anything for their depression, would you recommend this over that? According to the FDA indication, it's for treatment-resistant depression. So it's recommended that they have at least one trial of medication failure, and failure can be either not response or an ability to tolerate it. Insurance companies frequently want at least two medication trials. And then once the six-week period is over and they've completed the allotted number of sessions, let's say in a best case, it works as intended. Would you at some point need to go through something along these lines again? And if so, how long thereafter? Some people do feel like that they're starting to have a little bit worsening of their depression and will want to come back. Most insurance companies will want at least six to nine months between treatment series. Well, you let me beautifully dock into my next question. This is covered by insurance then, at least in terms of covering most of it or some of it, yeah? It is covered by insurance. It's an FDA procedure that's been out since 2008. There is possibly a copay that the patient may have to pick up, but that, again, is insurance dependent. And then finally, from what I understand, TMS isn't for patients that suffer from certain conditions. So who's not a candidate for this? Someone that has any metal in their head, neck, upper chest. Someone that has a tumor, has had a recent stroke, that has had any kind of clips in their brain. Someone that would not be eligible for an MRI because you're using a magnet. So they're pretty similar in restrictions. Well, folks, we trust you're now more familiar with TMS and how it can help with depression. Dr. Luann Eads, thanks so much again. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, for more information or to schedule an appointment, please call 501-526-8100. 
That's 501-526-8100. If you found this podcast helpful, please do share it on your social media. And thanks again for listening to UAMS Health Talk, a podcast sponsored by University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences. Hoping your health is good health. I'm Joey Wall.